$10,000. That's a lot of money. That is dang near close to how much the winners got for winning the challenge in the beginning. You can do a lot with 10 grand, but let me ask you this. Is it worth $10,000 to throw a challenge? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the money and run, teacher. I'll win every fight. Rookie revolution. This is the game! Hey guys, what's up? It's the Rookie Revolution, and today I will be looking at 10 times challengers have thrown daily challenges on the challenge. If you are confused by the intro, a behind the scenes fact that not many people know is that recently, if you blatantly throw a challenge, you will be fined $10,000. So in the contract that we sign, there's a $10,000 fine if you throw a challenge. Which is why challengers have to be sneaky when they do it. It can be an expensive strategy. You can hate your team, you can try and trim the fat, or you can just be trying to execute a more complicated plan. Either way, let's start looking at them. For a first quick honorable mention, we have CT throwing all brawl on double agents. This one is completely understandable in my opinion. In this daily, there were three stages, but the only one that matters here is the final stage, which was a pole wrestle. So it came down to a pole wrestle with Kyle and Cam versus CT and Big T. And bless her heart, Big T had no chance against Cam and CT knew this. He was being a little more mean than necessary, but he knew Big T he had no chance. Why do I even do it? We know she's not gonna be Cam. So what? I just keep wrestling Cam for no reason, hoping that Cam lets her win. I don't even think I can beat Cam. There's no I point. I feel like I'm letting CT down because this is easy for CT, and I've never done anything like this before. So when CT went against Kyle, instead of giving it his all, CT just kind of let Kyle win. Because if he would have won against Kyle, it would have been endless Cam versus Big T, and it would have gone on all night. And CT has an early bedtime nowadays. I won this fair and. Square. Me and CT faced off and I beat him. <laughs> I would love to think that Kyle beat CT legitimately, but there's no chance. There must have been a deal cut there, which sounded something like, hey Kyle, Big D's never gonna win, so just take it. Kyle, settle down. Don't get too carried away, okay? Next time it might be for real. At number 10, we have Bananas throwing Wall Walker on the ruins. So Bananas and Susie don't get along, and it stems all the way back from the Inferno 3, where Susie was not a team player, and Johnny feels she caught the good guys team to win. It carried over into the ruins where Susie was the final girl remaining on the champions team. Bananas not thinking she is a good competitor, hatches a plan for the guys to throw the challenge so Kellyanne can take out Susie. He's a baby, he's a powder, he's too loud, he never shuts up, he's the most self-consumed person I've ever met, and if I never see him again, it'll be too soon. I'm worried about having Susie on my team at the end. I definitely do not want her around. I've seen how she does final challenges. Not only can she not assist other people, she can't even pull her own weight. Now, the daily challenge was very simple. All you had to do was run up a circular ramp, collect three flowers, and deposit them. Johnny, in his first of many, tried to act like he failed on accident when it's painfully obvious he threw it. Ah! You drop a couple of flowers, it's not going to look that bad. They feel bad for me and they're embarrassed that I did as horribly as I did. In typical douchebag form, Johnny Bananas decides to throw his portion of the challenge. I think it's a risky business since I'll be in the final with him. Unfortunately for Bananas, none of the other guys on his team ended up throwing the challenge, which made them easily win and just made Johnny and Susie hate each other even more. In the end, the champions team won, so I guess no harm, no foul, right? Bananas. <laughs> Next up, we have another CT one, and this one makes me really upset. So this was on War of the Worlds 2 during the Escape to Freedom challenge. This daily was later on the season, and CT decided to fully commit himself to Kara and Polly's cult. And I guess as a favor, CT threw the challenge, and he wanted D gone. But honestly, CT did not need to do this, and he didn't need to make a mockery of the daily. The daily was an obstacle course on the water, and this was a really really unique idea for a challenge, and because of this, I doubt we will ever see it again, which really sucks. CT just sat down and played rock, paper, scissors with Zack. Wait, what the hell? What's going on? What the? You guys really want to do this as a team? 
now y'all really want to play. I really wish Zack just threw him off. I really hate watching this one, and I remember the first time I watched thinking that if young CT saw this, he would be disappointed. Brits just threw it, so just so you know, they just said, I don't give a f it's a girl's day. That's what happened right now. That was so stupid. CT, to be such a legend of the game and to be one of the best veterans to ever play the game, he's just completely disrespecting the integrity of the challenge. At this point, I know that there is some kind of deal that was made, and CT has now joined Polly's Alliance. If this is a decision that CT had to make for himself, then so be it. I just kind of lost a lot of respect for him. I'm not proud of what I did today, but it's what I had to do to secure my position in this game. Next up, we have two clingy from Bloodlines, and it's another Bananas one, which, yes, we will be seeing a lot more of. This plan even includes Kellyanne again. In this daily, your team had to traverse a cargo net over watered the fastest, so it was very easy. It was also a challenge in honor of DM, which should have motivated everyone to give it their all like DM always did. But Bananas made a plan for him and Anthony, Kellyanne's cousin, to throw the challenge so that Kellyanne would be safe. Now the challenge ended up being too easy and no one was buying anything, but Bananas and Anthony still gave it their best efforts, which is ironic. But even with Bananas and Anthony falling and Bananas pulling Rihanna off, they still won, which is actually very funny. Another thing I find funny is that Bananas voted in Anthony after this plan didn't work. Anthony was literally a puppet. Bananas is trying to help me by bringing me over the net and he's doing a really good job of helping me, I think. I want to try and play puppet master up here. So my plan for Rihanna is to basically help her lose. I get up on the edge and I try and make it look as convincing as possible that I've fallen. Come on. Are you serious? Come on, man. Apparently no one's buying it. We can't, we are, blue team is so pathetic that even when we try to lose, we still win. Next up, we have Wrecking Ball from X's 2, and this time we have someone new who threw it. Oh no, wait, it's Johnny again. The way this daily worked was you just stood on a platform and threw balls to try to knock your opponents off. The reason Bananas threw this one and put up his worst acting performance yet was very snaky and not talked about very much. This was the daily right after Bananas and Nani came back into the game, and they wanted revenge on Wes and Teresa. So what Bananas and Nani were thinking was that if Leroy and Naya went in against them, they would for sure take out Wes and Teresa. But Bananas didn't want the blood on his hands to put in his best friend, so he cut a deal with Jordan and Sarah for them to throw in Leroy so he didn't have to. Obviously, we want to take out Wes and Teresa, but in my heart of hearts, there's no way I'm sending Leroy and Naya in. So I just decided to put the tough decision in someone else's hands. <laughs> Johnny Bananas just accidentally falls backwards into the water. That's a team that was trying to help us. I don't want the blood on my hands at this point. So uh, I just decided to bow out gracefully. Leroy, of course, had no idea and didn't even try in this challenge. Now that Wes and Teresa are in last place, I'm super comfortable because of the fact that I got two guys up here that I'm assuming that we're on the same page as the rookies in. This is definitely one of the more dirty moves Bananas has pulled, in my opinion. No, Leroy's your boy. You gotta do what you gotta do. That's our only shot at getting rid of them. For being Leroy's boy, Bananas is not doing much to protect him. Next up, we have Balcony Swing on the Inferno 1, and on this daily, you had to rappel down a building collecting flags. Veronica and Katie hated each other, and Veronica did not want Katie on her team. So Veronica convinced the rest of the Road Rules team to throw the mission so Veronica could get the life shield and send Katie down. Now, the way they went about this was cruel. It's easy to understand Veronica being mean, but Abram completely embarrassed Katie by joking around when throwing, and when the elimination came around, Abram wore the opposite team colors. That's just mean and I feel like it goes against Abram's competition beliefs. Anyways, the funny thing is that Katie won the elimination to complete silence and it was magnificent. We've chosen to send in our weakest player. Who's that? Uh, going to be Katie. Ha ha in your face, look what I did. I'm still here and you lost $10,000, you dumb Next up, we have one of my favorites, Wes throwing the chain gang challenge on the ruins. Wes came onto this season with absolutely nobody. Everyone was against him and he knew no matter what he was going to go into elimination so he figured that he would do everything he could to help the other team win i'm gonna throw the challenge so bad that i will tackle my own teammates down to the ground so on this daily your team has to one by one climb a rope from bottom to top west was swinging and swinging and it was honestly
honestly one of the funniest moments in challenge history. Bananas figured they could just put Wes at the bottom so he would be out right away. So Wes's plan didn't work and the champions team still won. We're going to put you between the two of us. We're just going to kick you in your head. <laughs> they thought, oh, there'll be a way that we can get around it. Well, I'm about to prove them wrong. The beast unhooks before I do, which DQs her and myself. There's not a whole lot I can do at this point. Wes is just so funny. He volunteered to go in after like it was his decision. Based off the way stuff went down, I'll volunteer. We can't. I'm sorry, but we can't act like he's volunteering. He threw the mission. Wes and his champions team dynamic on the ruins made that season. These people one on one are scared to death of me. They know that one on one stacked up next to each other. I'm stronger and smarter than everyone here. Next, we have Jordan and Leroy, but not really related to this. Throwing sausage party on free agents. All these people throwing are Hall of Famers funny enough. In this daily, you are wrapped up in saran wrap and roll through an obstacle course. Now, this daily is widely known because of the reason Jordan threw it. Jordan had a season long rivalry with bananas and it came down to Jordan wanting to be the one to take him out. So when the daily started and Jordan saw his number one Zach and Johnny Riley in the lead, he knew that they would vote in bananas and Jordan would then go down into the draw, pull every kill card in one of the most iconic moments in challenge history, in which we all know how that ended. So I won't really get into that. What am I working my ass off for? I already know Laurel's one. Then I look up and I see my friends Johnny and Zach the one and two. I'm not gonna get voted in. However, I bet they'll vote the way I want them to. I'll go to the draw. You got served tonight. As I said, Leroy also threw it, but he was smart too because he knew he wouldn't go in if he was in the draw. Number three is catch and release from Rivals 1, which is just a simple swimming daily. And I will first say that there is a whole conspiracy theory as to why Evan threw this. I talked about in my conspiracy theories part four video, but pretty much the main alliance of Rivals 1 was scared to the core of CT. So they hatched a plan for Evan to throw a daily and then vote CT in. We're basically trying to execute CT losing and Evan losing worse. That way Evan was guaranteed going into the jungle and would be able to throw in CT against them and hopefully take him out. Now Evan did this. He threw the daily and all hell broke loose with Nehemiah, his partner, who was not completely on board. Anyways, they went down into the elimination and Evan just could not do it. It was embarrassing. Evan just really makes me mad here so that's why I'm being brief. I'm gonna throw the challenge. This is the plan and please don't tell Nehemiah. I told him flat out that I'm gonna try my best. He took that information and he turned it into a big joke. Just don't ask questions. We're doing the right thing here. For number two we have don't push me around from final reckoning and this one is a doozy. This was basically just a rugby game. That's actually all it was. It was just rugby. I first want to say two things before I get into the actual throwing. First, they say all contact is allowed, but how is it fair for all genders to tackle each other? It just doesn't seem even. Bananas used another tactic, which was very funny. <laughs> Also, speaking of bananas, can we please acknowledge his speed? He does not get enough credit for being just one of the fastest people to ever be on the show. Okay, on to the throwing. So, Messy Shady Shane was on a team with two people he were against in Bananas and Tony and Devon and Jose. So, instead of playing, Shane basically just sat out. He not only sat out, but he actually assisted the other team by opening doors and giving directions. I kind of have some bad news for you. Our team cannot win. We're on a team of two teams who want us to go in. You can't think with That's your ball sack all the time. Think with your brain, man. I'm on a team of people I dislike, so I'm going to do nothing to help these a-holes win. <laughs> I look over to Shane, Shane is holding the door open. Go, go. This caused a huge fight between him and Jose, and it was just hilarious. No one else sees it, but this looks like Shane's throwing the game. I was confused about the rules. But you're on our team, though. I'm yeah. not on your team. This is not a real team. But you desabotaged us. Jose, I didn't sabotage us, I sabotaged you. I also want to mention this is a prime example of throwing for strategy. Shane actually made a smart move here because if his team won, he would pretty much be screwed. So I actually like that he didn't throw this for a stupid reason like many others. Shane threw this challenge and helped us win. Everyone on his team didn't like him. The chances of him potentially going in had Bananas and Tony gotten the vote were extremely high. So personally, I think it was a smart move. I was confused about the rules. Oh, shut the f*** up, Shane. Shut up. Lastly, at number one, we have Relic Runner from War of the Worlds 2. And I think we all know about this one. Basically, in the beginning of War of the Worlds 2, Team USA was completely split down the middle with Kara and Polly leading one side and Bananas 
Janice and Laurel leading the other. Everything imploded though once Laurel pulled the trigger on Wes, basically ending any amount of team unity they had. So the next daily, Bananas and Laurel hatched a game plan to secure the numbers on their team to basically make it so they were set to the end. And this involved throwing the daily. I have a little secret. Bananas is going to throw today's challenge so he can regain control of this game. This will help the numbers get back on his side. Therefore, he could get the votes and he could send certain people home on our team. So anything that you see looks suspicious probably is. The way the daily worked is you had to go down a hill, get a large relic while the other team shoots you with water and balls and whatnot. It was a mess. Shut the but it was a fun challenge. Bananas and Laurel did everything they could to throw this. Now they put on a show and let me tell you it was entertaining. Fights were happening everywhere and it was a mess. I find myself behind Laurel and then I notice she's going really slow. So I try to make my way around her and she stays in front of me. Johnny and I have a conversation. There are still some players that we're working with Wes that are on our team that it would be better if they were not on our team. If we lose today, it's not the end of the world. Are you going to throw the challenge? That's not how I play, man. I play fair. It seems really freaking sketchy that some of the best players on our team aren't getting up the hill. Johnny's slipping and sliding like he's never done a challenge before. Ashley's accusing Bananas of pushing her and doing it on purpose, and in my mind, I'm like, he definitely did. Bananas is an amazing actor. The plan almost ended in success, but Loro ended up going home in an epic elimination with Bananas following right after. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Social media's links are in the description. And as always, take care.